Hello, welcome or welcome back. Please come to lie onto your back. And then stand both feet. So the feet are standing and the, your knees are pointing towards the ceiling. And get hold of your left knee with both hands. So you hold your left knee with both hands. How are you doing this? <laughs> how, how do you hold your left knee? What's your solution to hold your left knee? So that it's the least effort, the least work to hold your left knee. And the least work to hold your right knee. So what do you have to do that your right knee is not falling to the outside and you have the least work to have your right foot standing. Hmm? How do you do this? And then our first movement. Move the left knee a little bit to the left and back again. The left knee a little bit to the left and back again. So you have a move your left knee to the left. How do you do this? and then move it back to the right. How much of your arms, how, mu how much do you guide your left knee? How much control do you exert with your hands, with your dexterous hands and your, the arms with whom you have a lot of movement experience in the sense that you uh, use the arms all day to move in all sorts of directions whereas the legs usually do only do the same kind of movements so it's easier for you to direct the movement of course with the hands but try to direct the movement also with your knee so that the hands are only the hands only accompany your knee or are you able to let your left knee fall to the left and just break the fall with your hands catch your catch your left leg from really falling to the left. Not everyone can do that. Not everyone can let go of the, of the leg. I've seen experienced movers who were not able to give up control, to let something just fall. It's, so don't beat yourself up if it's not easy for you. There's like really experienced movers who can do all sorts of tricks and for them it's difficult to let go of the leg, but if you can let go of the leg, and um, the, the trick here is to be able to feel those differences, so that's what I'm pointing at, to be able to feel your options, so you become aware. You know, quite a, quite a few options of, of movement, of directing and controlling and letting go and letting it happen. And then let's modify this movement a little bit by allow your pelvis to go with your knee which means allow your pelvis to roll to the left while you move your left knee to the left. And 
there's a couple of ways you can do this. Uh, you could allow your right knee to come to the left as well. So as, as if you would roll onto your left side, but how do you get up again? How do you come back onto your back again? Of course, with, your, with the help of your right, with your right leg, as you might have discovered already. So in this second movement, allow your left knee to move to the left again and come back and move to the left again and come back, but also roll your pelvis to the left and come back. And as for the right foot that's still standing, for the right knee that's still pointing towards the ceiling, you could either keep your right knee pointing towards the ceiling, even though you're rolling your pelvis to the left. So this is the mastery of the movement, the highest level of control and being able to observe that. Or you just flop everything to the left, like in a bear roll. And to come back, you have to bring your right foot back. So we have these two possibilities. Either you keep your right knee towards the ceiling while you roll. And of course your head, yes, the head can roll to the left and your shoulder girdle can roll to the left. Everything can roll to the left, except for the right leg. You can leave your right leg behind. Or you can allow your right leg to fall to the left as well. Until you get the hang of it. Until it starts to be easy to go from lying on your back to lying on your left side. Why not? Yes, you could use your right hand to hold your right. Let's do this together as an as a intermission, as a variation. What is it? As an auxiliary movement with your right hand, hold your right knee. With your left hand, hold your left knee. And then let slowly your head roll to the left and let your left knee come to the left and allow your right knee to come to the left until until you're lying on your left side, so the head is going to be displaced, your head is going to move also to the left and to come back, what do you roll first? You could roll first the head to the right back to face the ceiling again and then you, with your right hand you lift your right knee or your right knee lifts your right hand, however you look at the movement, however you execute, however you do the movement to bring yourself slowly back onto your back again and at some point you have to lift your left knee until you're on your back again. So that's an a auxiliary movement of rolling to the left and, and back again. But what we're really looking for is to have your right foot standing and both hands on your left knee and just roll everything to the left except for your right foot. Which of course is a hip joint opening. You, if you have been following me for a longer time or maybe years even, you know that this is a hip joint opener for your right hip joint if you keep your right knee towards the ceiling. Clever little move. And then let's have a little pause, a little rest on the back. To not drag this out too long, just have a little, a little lesson here, a little movement experiment. And then, what do we do next? Shall we proceed with this side or shall we switch over to the other side? Um, let's do the movement on both sides. Let's develop it bit by bit. Please stand both feet again. With both hands hold your right knee. And then start, yes, the left foot standing, the left knee pointing towards the ceiling, the left, the sole of your foot feel the contact to the floor and then the right knee with both hands to the right. At first, just a little, a tiny little wake up movement in your hip joint, in your right hip joint. That there's a movement, the pelvis does not roll, but there's a movement, maybe an unusual movement. Just the ball joint of your hip joint moves, rolls to the right, the right knee comes closer to the floor on your right side and maybe you can roll your head to the right to follow along so that your nose is always in the same angle like your right knee your head rolls together with your right hip joint. Your head rolls together with your right knee. And of course, it only goes that far. For some, it's touching. You can, for some, maybe you can touch your knee to the floor. I can't, but maybe you can. 
but maybe you're far from it. So there's, everything is possible. Let's not beat ourselves up for how far and how flexible we are, but let's celebrate and praise ourselves for what we can perceive. How much control do you have of your leg, of your head, how to coordinate. Can your arm lead your knee? Can your knee lead your arm? So these are the qualities we're looking for. Real movement, we are concerned with movement qualities, with abilities to sense, to refine, to improve. And then at some point also start to roll your pelvis to the right. So your pelvis suddenly starts to roll together with your knee. So now there's not so much movement in your right hip joint anymore, but in the left one if you keep your left knee pointed towards the ceiling. So for this movement, bring your right knee towards the right, to the floor, to the right, and roll your pelvis to the right, but try to keep your left knee towards the ceiling. Or maybe you find pleasure in letting everything drop to the right. Let's do this also as a variation. Let everything drop to the right. And then come back onto your back and of course that's the easiest if you move your left knee first. So when you're on your right, everything is on your right side, you're lying on your right side. The first thing to move would be your left leg, the left foot comes to stand, the left knee comes to point towards the ceiling and then you can roll your head and droops your on the back again. It's so easy. Isn't it? And it's fun. It's getting easier and easier. So this is the kind of movement that gets easier with each repetition. So maybe from fitness we are used to, if you do push-ups or sit-ups or uh, don't do sit-ups, sit-ups are no good. But if you do fitness exercises, it gets harder and harder with every repetition. Maybe the next day you can't perform them anymore because you're so sauce, so exhausted. So the muscles are so sour, sour muscles. <clears throat> But here, these movements, these kind of movements, they get easier with every, with every time you, you do them because you do them so carefully, so consciously, with such awareness. Let's do this, this fun bear rolling variation again with your left hand on your left knee, with your right hand on your right knee and roll everything to the right bit by bit and make it a controlled roll, not a fall, but a roll to the right bit by bit until you're on your right side and then lift your left knee first. So you have to press down with your right knee to the floor, of course, enabled to lift the left knee and roll your head to the left, to the left, to the left, until suddenly, finally, your knee lifts up and then, then you could continue to the other side to roll from one side to the other side so nicely. And then come to lie onto your back again. Let's take a rest. <clears throat> so this is a marvelous little movement for the hip joints to find coordinations and freedom in your hip joints. And you, you might feel that your legs are lying differently. You might perceive your pelvis different on the floor now when you lie on the floor. On your back just for a couple of seconds, take a rest on your back. But we are looking for more, we're looking for meaning. We need, we need a little bit more. We're not satisfied with just a little hip joint smoothening. Of course it's nice to oil the hip joint a little bit, but we're looking for something deeper, something more humane, some, some extra spice, something that makes it worthwhile to read the novel. So, what is it? We need to have something meaningful, a function. So please, stand your feet again with your knees pointing towards the ceiling and this time uh, with both hands hold your left knee again and, and how do you catch your knee? Can you hold your, your leg on the back side behind your knee? Or can you hold your knee underneath your knee on the front side? Or can you, can you, can you reach your left foot with your right hand? Maybe you have to lift your head. Maybe you can catch your left foot 
how far, how much of your leg is available to your hands. Hold your left foot with your right hand and maybe you hold your left knee with your left hand and move your left knee again to the left like before and back but this time hold your left foot with your right hand or your left ankle with your right hand or your left lower leg with your right hand and roll to the left and see if you can move your if you can roll your head displace your head and roll with your head to the left if you can roll with your head to your left knee let's see can you roll with your you roll to the left and your left knee touches the floor and maybe you can roll your head to your left knee or over your left knee And where does this movement lead? If you follow with your head in this, with your nose close to the floor, to your left knee, and then further and further, further and further, can this movement, can this little roll to the left lead to a function to come up to sit? Could, could you? Could you? Is this possible? If you roll like this to the left and you continue and continue and you already started a trajectory, you already started the path, can you come up to sit like this? How would you have to hold your left knee? What do you have to do with your right leg as a counterbalance? <laughs> is there any way, is it in any way possible to come up to sit? And uh, the even bigger question, can you find the same way back down again? And if you did take a rest, and if you have not yet found your way, try a little bit more, I will wait. And I'm not looking for a certain way to do it. I'm asking you to find any way to do it. And there's a couple of ways you could do it. You could help or not help with your left elbow. You need to help with your right leg. There's a couple, a whole, a whole arsenal of variations possible with this. You could have your left elbow inside to the right of your left knee or you could have your left elbow to the left of your left knee. And see if you can roll up to sit and see if you can come back down again. And if you found one solution, you might find another one. And which solution works best for you? And why? What's particularly, particularly smooth in the solution you found? And most of all, where is room for variation instead of locking yourself into one method? Try to be flexible, try to be variable, try to find, be open for, for other pathways, be open for other ideas. Okay, and then take a break, come back onto your back. Just a short break on the back. Then, yes, we try to keep this under half an hour and then get your feet to stand again. And, and then, and then, 
after a short break, stand and then your right, your right foot. Hold your, hold what? The knee, the leg, your right leg, your right foot. With which hand? From the inside, from in between your legs or from the outside? Where can you hold your, your right leg, your right foot and then start to move your right knee to the right and roll to the right and somehow, somehow bring your clothes your nose close to your right knee and somehow roll over the right knee until you can go further and further until suddenly you're sitting. Oh, how did this, this happen? How did you come to sit on the right side? Huh? And, and how can you... It's so far on the floor. How can you come back down again? And this shouldn't put any stress anywhere. It should just be a change of position without stressing anything, without pulling or pushing, without any, any, any pain in your back or your knee or, or your, your neck anywhere. Just try to find a way that's just smooth, that's just nice. And again, don't get stuck in one specific way of doing that. But allow yourself for variation. Allow yourself to explore many ways to do it. So the next time, yeah. Yes, uh, experiment a little bit. Or take a break together with me. We need breaks, so the breaks will make this whole thing better. Just to, even if it did not work, or even if it worked splendidly, take a little break on your back, just a second, and then bring your feet to stand again. Or take a break, or stand your feet, or don't do anything, or do a lot more. And then we do the same thing to the left again. The left knee to the left, and you roll to the left, and bring your nose close to your left knee and come see what is a way to do this so you can not only roll from your back to your side but roll from the back onto your butt <laughs> from the back to the butt from back to butt from back from your back over the side to sit onto your left side and once you're on your left side find the way down again roll over your back and come up onto the right side until you're up on the right side and then come back on the floor to roll onto your right side, on your back, and up on the left side. And maybe you have to change grips, probably you have to change grip, you have to change from holding your right foot to hold your left foot, or from holding your right knee to hold your left knee, or some people they don't want to hold anything, they want to have their hands free because they have a gun and they are soldiers, they cannot hold anything else than the weapons. So they have to find a way to not hold the, the, the knees and, and come up to sit. That's just a few people. So if you're not a soldier, you can hold your foot or your knee or your lower leg and roll from the side over your back to the other side. And then, then take a rest on your back.
and don't press your lower back to the back. Just find a neutral position to be on your back. You might be more flexible in your pelvis now. Just have a have a neutral position. Just rest on your back. Wow, that's nice, huh? Wow, it's really resting. <clears throat> so we went from the back to the left and sit up on the left and then come back onto the back and sit up on the right. There's something missing to a whole circle, isn't it? So please get your feet to stand again, to stand your feet again and then hold of your whatever it was on your left side. We're going to roll over the left side. So please come to roll over the left side to sit until you're up to sit and instead of going over the left side flip your legs over flip your legs so you can go down to the right and onto your back and then to the left until you sit again and then flip the legs over so you can go down onto the right so you're passing over the front side And maybe you notice you don't need to bring your head onto the floor anymore. The head can stay up all the time and you can start to roll in circles. And now it needs to optimize and it will optimize. It will get more congruent. Everything will match better together because you already start to get, I hope you already start to get uh, a feeling for it and by getting a feeling for it which means to improve and to become better in this ability to roll and you start to smoothen out edges and you start to find the movements you don't actually need or displacements you don't need or you find displacements you, you need twists and extend where you look how you turn when you turn timing is so important in this lesson and then of course we play with orientation every time you will look into a different direction so when you come up where do you face when you come up when you go down where do you face so you become aware of your timing and your orientation and of course you need to become aware of what you actually move which we could call manipulation but that's uh, i'm not sure if this is really a, such a good word or if this is really match but uh, displacement maybe a displacement of limbs where you where you move what at what time and then where do you face so slowly slowly don't get dizzy i don't want you to become dizzy i want you to become more proficient more self-reliant of course that's what we need to be as grown-ups mm -hmm. and have a feeling of accomplishment a feeling of moving better, a feeling, uh, feeling of being more smoother, of being more proficient. So that's all positive things. That's all f fun things. I will go for another round myself. But where will I go? Maybe I go backwards first. Go to the left. Then go to the right. And I go up and over the front and down again. Or to the other side.
<laughs> a little bit of fun with rolling and with the hip joints. Yes? <laughs> Is that fun? Is that interesting? I find it interesting. And we have all the freedom. So we could do this more formal, more strict, like force ourselves to fall in line with a specific thought, with a specific technique. So you may discover patterns in this movement, like, ah, this would match this and this would match that. And then you can narrow it down and make it very strict, mm, like in a, like scales in music. It needs to be this, it needs to be that, and then it needs to be this and that. And then you have like the pure form of something very pure and very strict, or you can uh, like Pollack, but without the drinking, you just put the colors on the thing and it's marvelous as well, isn't it? So the last thing we need to do is to come up to stand and see how it feels in standing and to come back into our everyday lives, which requires standing as humans standing means something to be able to stand, make our parents proud, huh? Okay, so please come up to stand. Hey, that was easy. Yes, just a stand for, or a move for, and see how that works, how your hip joints work. How is that when you roll from one foot to the other, you roll not on your back and on your side anymore, but you roll over the different parts of your foot. <laughs> we move like this, we move like a tiger. Or somebody who smells cookies needs to see, oh, what is this smell of fresh? <laughs> Something like this. Yes, and, and you can play with your legs and you can play how everything responds to this displacement of yourself. <laughs> I hope I didn't take this too far. <laughs> so much freedom and it's nice to be able to play with it. And to roll, not only on the floor, but to roll while standing, to roll over the feet to move the pelvis and the head and the shoulder, everything to move from one spot to the next. All right, so thank you so much for being here with me and see you in the next video.